try to do the dancing part, but it's not my way. It's okay. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. Okay. Well, thank you for your patience. Uh, we use, I'm talking about the, what kind of features of the XML I use to determine the uh, Kalimakus number, which is a number to, uh, uh, to express the condition of any document, of any letter of the document. And it can measure the readability of the preservation of the document. First, you calculate the number, the number of the Kalimakus number of each letter, and then you obtain the Kalimakus number of every word, line, sentence, and so on. This is the values that are given to any letter, and so for a papyrus like this one, we obtain a matrix like this one for every letter, and the result is a number that tells you how well preserved is the document. Uh, Polyphemus is a database of the textual contents of the papyrus. It searches the available data, are these 16 features, and are grammatical data, of course, and then you can look for any uh, grammatical feature. And 99%, more than 99% of the words, of the actual words of the papyri are uh, lemmatized post tag disambiguated, given a word translation, a translation, etymological information, and word formation info. And it combines with the non-text information in the Kalimakus database. So you can search for, uh, for instance, Guinea, Aselema near Kalos, and, uh, uh, and for also uh, for the translation. It's very interesting for historians. The other part of this project are the Ancient Greek di Digital Dictionary and the Madrid Word List. The Digital Dictionary is a, pro a, 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 pr a project currently in progress, and its, the, the, its aim is to build a real digital Greek uh, dictionary using the traditional dictionaries, mainly by E, Liddell, Scott, Jones, and the um, Diccionario Griego Español. It aims is to transform the lexical and grammatical information of the traditional lexica into data points. This is not always easy because sometimes here you see uh, um, the clarity and systematicity are sometimes sacrificed to the page space constraints. Here you see a typical lemma in the little Scott Jones with a lot of references. Uh, there, these, that has to be deambiguated. And sometimes some of these lemmata are really micro size on philology question, and some kind of information cannot be transformed into data points. But most of it, it can. So it presents the, di the data for each lemma in the dictionaries in two ways. Uh, definition centered, it just gives you the traditional definition, and then a grammatically and statistically centered version with uh, uh, all the aggregated uh, grammatical information that can be uh, uh, extract from all the, dic of the dictionaries. It uses the Madrid uh, word list to parse the full corpus of literary authors and the corpus of the papyri in order to obtain statistical data on the real use of words in every author or gender and, and period. And I build the algorithm to build up the regular forms of the paradigm for, every, uh, for most uh, nouns and adverbs. This is what it looks like, uh, the, 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 the data of the, uh, the entries uh, every, uh, the, the, the data has been converted into data points. Uh, some of the tasks involved are to align the lemmata of the dictionaries, this is already uh, made, and to make uh, explicit the implicit information in the lexicographical information. And to create the regular paradigms for nouns and adjectives, this is also done and to process the uh, morphological information and incorporate it into the Madrid word list. And the Madrid word list is used for what you use word lists. Uh, it contains uh, almost two million lemmatized ancient Greek word forms. And 
is used to lemmatize and assign a part of speech, translation, etymological, word formation data to each token on the parsed text, in this case, the Greek papyri. It depends on previous, uh, a previous much shorter uh, word list, corrects many errors, and adds proper names. In fact, there are uh, three interconnected lists, which I try to uh, explain. It's a list of the lemmata connected with a list of the forms of the lemmata and the most frequent forms. The lemmata comes from all these sources and uh, it gives you not only the lemma, but the alolemma. I, I don't know if there's a word for that in English. The different forms of a lemma. It gives you information on the word formation, uh, post-tagging in a very compact way, and uh, etymological information that you can search for, it, for every word. In the forms part, comes from all these sources, plus two millions of computer-generated uh, forms from, from the existing lemmata. This is, the, this is uh, because uh, ancient Greek is a highly uh, um, inflexed uh, word, uh, language, and verbs have more than 100 forms. And the most frequent forms is a way to deambiguate many, uh, many words that appear many times, usually with a single meaning, but it ha can have many different meanings in other dialects. So it uh, leaves us with two problems, which is disambiguating and syntactic parsing and semantic analysis. I was working doing this all by myself, but I, uh, uh, two years ago, one and a half year ago, I discovered that I didn't need to do this because uh, for disambiguation uh, and a decent syntactic parsing, you can use UD5, which is a wonderful resource. And for semantic analysis, we have the likes of GPT-4. Uh, let me explain a, a bit of that. Uh, when UDP, UD5 is fed a curated, I mean a segmented, tokenized, regularized, ancient Greek text from papyri, it outputs a decent syntactic parsing for short and medium size sentences and a more than decent morphosyntactic deambiguation of word forms. Here you have an example. You have, there are many, uh, some caveats. Uh, it tends to analyze non-analyzable forms. The first three forms are, uh, are artifacts of the papyri, but anyway, UD pipe tries to analyze them and assigns a, a, a fanciful uh, lemma. And uh, to finish this with the reference, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, looking for a way to make some semantic analysis and decided to give uh, GPT-4 a try. And I asked GPT-4 in Spanish, Dime de que, uh, this is something like, tell me what is about this Greek papyrus of third century before Christ. I uh, cleaned somehow the, the, the papyrus and GPT-4 answered me that. And this is amazing because it's an amazing translation of the document of a papyrus of the first century. And it's, uh, I give you, and I ask the, the uh, GPT-4 to make me an English translation of the Spanish answer. And this is the English, please, uh, beware. This is the English translation of the Spanish answer. And I assure you, this is a very, very good translation of, uh, of a very difficult text because it's not only broken, it's incomplete, but it's full with unorthodox forms. But then I try, uh, I'm going to ask GPT-4 the same question in English. And I think this is exactly the same question in English. Tell me what the text of this ancient Greek papyri from the first century before Christ is about. And that's the very same text. And the answer was that. I apologize, but the text is So what's going on here? I don't know because it is for certain that GPT-4 doesn't know Spanish better than it knows English. 
So uh, uh, we have to wait and we have to check because the problem is that it's rehabil really <laughs> it's not reliable. Um, and yes, that's what that's. You can find these uh, these programs in our list. And thank you.